Hey everyone, so in this video, I'm going to uh, discuss how to implement the statistical clustering in R. Um, so the package that we will be using is called the mclust. So go ahead and download the or install the package if you need to. So uh, it's the mclust package, so I'm loading the package. So the data that we'll be working on is the diabetes uh, data set. So I'm going to just rename it as DAT just because it's a shorter and a more convenient name. So let's take a look at this. So this data set has uh, one, two, three, four variables. And the first variable is class. Uh, second, third and fourth variable is the glucose, insulin and SSPG levels. Um, so you can see that this data already has labels attached to it. So what we are going to do is I'm going to remove the class variable. I'm going to cluster the data based on the glucose, insulin, and SSPG variables. And then I'm going to see how the, basically I'm going to see if the grouping that we get overlaps with this class variable, okay? So I have extracted all of the, um, the first column into a separate variable. Let's just take a look at the class. So you can see that there are basically three classes. Normal, is it normal? There's a normal class, there's a chemical class, and there's an overt class. So the original, so the data is originally divided into these three classes. So let's see if we end up getting the same uh, clustering structure from our algorithm. Okay, so I removed the first column. And now this is the data set that we are going to work with. Uh, next, so the function, this is the mclust function that uh, we can use to implement the statistical uh, clustering algorithm. Um, so I would encourage you to go ahead and look at the documentation of this um, uh, of this uh, package actually. So if you just go and Google mclust, you will see a, a PDF of uh, with uh, uh, you should see a PDF that has all the different functions that are there in this uh, in the mclust package, and basically you'll also get all the details of this mclust function, so how it functions. Um, yeah, so let's see. So it has a lot of output. So let me just show you fit. If I do fit dollar, it has all of these different elements as a part of its output. Okay, so I'm just going to discuss a few of these. So fit dollar G basically tells me that um, I have finally three um, uh, clusters. So remember that uh, we never told the algorithm, right? So when we this is where we call the algorithm, we never told it that we want three classes, but it's decided. Um, remember we discussed the AIC BIC criteria. So this uses the BIC criteria. So it is decided that three is the best number of clusters to have. Uh, so if you see this, so BIC, it gives you uh, the BIC for all of the different models it has fit. You see, these are the model names, EII, VII. I'm not exactly sure what if these names mean anything. But basically, uh, so remember, uh, I mentioned in the video that M class wants to have the largest uh, BIC. So these are all negative numbers. So this is the largest BIC, which corresponds to three comma three. That means there are three clusters here. Um, so let's look at all the estimates. So remember, Uh, so let's take a look at the estimates. So there are three clusters. That means uh, first we need to know the proportion of elements that belong to each cluster. So you get that via fit dollar, or fit dollar parameter dollar pro. Pro is for proportion. This gives you all the parameters. So you can see that there are three numbers. So the first cluster has, you know, all 50, roughly 53%. The second one has 26 and the third one has roughly 20%. Uh, of uh, elements. Let's look at the means. Okay, so there are three clusters. So each cluster um, So there are three clusters. So remember, uh, this is using the uh, Gaussian mixture models. So we're assuming that each um, uh, each 
cluster has basically this Gaussian distribution uh, with some mean vector and some covariance matrix. Uh, so this is the mean vector. Why mean vector and covariance matrix? Because this is three-dimensional data, therefore the mean is three-dimensional. So the first column is the mean of the first cluster. Second column is the mean of the second cluster and third is the uh, mean of the, remember this is the mean of the normal distribution, right, of the third cluster. So you go column wise. And finally, we have the variances. So uh, let's see. So uh, this is the uh, variance covariance matrix of, so the, the here there are three elements again of the first, uh, uh, of the first cluster and the second cluster and the third cluster. And then finally, we want to see what are the results of this clustering process. So you do fit dollar Z. So I'm just going to display a first few elements on it. Uh, so this will give me a matrix. So let me do dimension of fit dollar Z. So it's a 145 by 3 matrix. And let me just check the dimension of data as well. So 145 elements. So um, what this gives is this is probability that the first element in the sample belongs to cluster 1 is 0.99 prob or let me rephrase this so remember we do cluster allocation uh, by calculating these conditional probabilities right so this is a probability of cluster 1 uh, for the first data point which is 0.99 probability of cluster 2 for the first data point is this and probability that of cluster 3 for the first data point is this so you can see that the maximum probability is this guy. Therefore, this first element should be allocated to cluster one. Similarly, we can see even the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth elements are all allocated to the first cluster. So this way of this, uh, this method of giving probabilities for each cluster, this is called as a soft allocation. Um, this is something I didn't talk about in my videos, but it's just a general terminology. So that's soft allocation. So if I do fit dollar classification, it gives me the cluster allocation. So the first element is in cluster one, second in cluster one, and sixth is also in cluster one. So this is the hard classification. Uh, okay, now let's see how this clustering that we got relates to the class labels that were given, right? Remember the normal and the chemical and I forget the other one, the, the, uh, the three class labels that were given uh, in the data set. So class S is basically the estimator or the predicted classes from this clustering process. So it has, it's allocating a cluster one, two or three to each of the data points. Um, oh, unique is just a method of dynamically checking how many classes are there in the data set. Um, so unique will pull out all the unique elements in this in this vector. So you see this vector consists of one, two, and three numbers. So if you do unique, this will pull out one, two, and three. Anyways, so ls is a variable. This is a list variable. This is a new type of variable, which I haven't discussed before, but it is useful to uh, learn about this. And that's why I'm using this list variable. I can easily do this using matrix or some other data structure, but I want to introduce this list structure to you all. So this basically introduces an empty list. Okay, so this list is empty. There is nothing in LS right now. So I'm going to use a for loop. It goes from one to basically three. That means this is the total number of classes we have. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract all the elements that belong to the first cluster or that are classified into the first cluster. So the which command will help you do that. So if I do this, it means that observations in rows 107, 113 and so on are all in the uh, first cluster. Um, so remember, uh, the class variable had all of the original classes. So if I do this, 
this is going to give me the classes of all of the elements that we put in the first cluster. So I'm going to run all of this and print. So you can see that all of these elements we were we decided or the algorithm decided are in cluster one. The second element uh, in this list is all of the elements that are in the second cluster and this third element, this is the third element of the list, and this is the second element of the list. So the third element is all of the items that we put in the third cluster together. And if you look at the original labels, you can see that this is mostly all of the so-called normal elements. The second cluster mostly has the chemical elements and the third one has the overt elements mostly. So there are so that so there is this one exception. There is a chemical here, there is a normal here. So the clustering that we have doesn't perfectly overlap with the original labels or with the original classes. But you can see that the first cluster is predominantly the normal one, second is predominantly the chemical one, and third one is predominantly the overt one. Um, so this is most of the things that you need to know about clustering. Um, so you can see that this uh, package will calculate everything for you. The only thing that you need to know is how to interpret uh, different results and also the and also be able to interpret the uh, final clusters.